Good day, everyone. I am Nika Mancilia, and I'm here to present to you the materials flow analysis of Malaysia. This research is prepared alongside Dr. Anthony Chu and Dr. Marianne Faith Martinico Perez. To give you an overview of what I will be presenting today, here is the outline of presentations. Firstly, I will be introducing a brief background on Malaysia and the need for material flow analysis. This is followed by the methodology where I will be enumerating the steps taken in conducting the study, as well as the derivations of the computations and its data sources. Third, I will then present the graphs and analysis in the results and discussion area. This is followed by the conclusion and references. To give a brief background of Malaysia, Malaysia is considered as an upper middle income country with a national income per capita close to $11,000. It has transitioned from being a mining and agriculture economy to one that gives more focus on the manufacturing in the 1970s. The Industrial Coordination Act of 1975 was developed to accelerate the pace of, man of industrialization and achieve the objectives set by the new economic policy. From a 13.9% share of the GDP in 1970, the manufacturing sector grew to 30% in 1999. Because of this, the country has met the criteria for a newly industrialized country status where 30% of exports should consist of manufactured goods. Major products of the country include electronic components, semiconductor devices, and appliances. To describe the interaction of the domestic economy with the natural environment and the rest of the world, in relation to the flow of materials, an economy-wide material flow account was developed. The knowledge of these material flows would aid in, develop in the development of environmental policies such as the coupling policies and circular economy initiatives. The study of Shafi in 2016 used MFA with the aim of assessing the urban top metabolism of three cities in Malaysia, namely Kuala Lumpur, Ampang Jaya, and Silayang. Their results provided information on urban ma management at a city level that may be used to assist in the decision making for future development and to provide informed assessment on environmental performance on an urban area. Similarly, another article by similar authors expanded their study on the cities of Kajang, Sepang, and Putrahaya of Greater Kuala Lumpur. This showed that even with the lowest population, Putrahaya consumers consume the highest amount of water. We have another study conducted by Shah in 2018 that aimed to analyze the level of awareness among the public and retailers on MFA, as well as their views on the current e-waste management practices. Their results show that there is lacking awareness on MFA and environmental campaigns should be done to increase the general public's knowledge on the matter. From the literature presented, it can be identified that no study has been done on the material flow analysis for the whole of Malaysia. In fact, there needs to be more awareness on the said topic. This study aims to fill this gap by performing a thorough analysis of the material flows and its relationship with economic development and current policies. As I have mentioned, the use of materials have been increasing globally due to industrialization. While these materials are used for the benefit of the economy, they are often disposed of improperly. It is necessary, therefore, to understand the relationship of material use and the extraction with its disposal. Material flow analysis is a method developed to describe this interaction in the economy and environment. The MFA indicators used in this study are shown in the figure in front of you. This gives a general overview of the physical and socioeconomic systems of the country. The solid area depicts the domestic border of the country under study. So we have domestic material consumption, which accounts for the total quantity of inputs, less the material for exports. This is denoted by the DMC. The inputs include imports and domestic extraction. Domestic extraction are the materials taken from the local environment for the utilization of the socioeconomic system. Besides exports, Another output of the economy are the domestic process output, or the DPO, which are the byproducts generated during manufacturing, consumption, and disposal of materials. On this slide, we have the sources of data. 
data on the country's import, export, domestic extraction, domestic material consumption, and material footprint were gathered from the database provided by the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, or the CSIRO. This includes information for 150 countries dating back from 1970 to 2017, which are measured in tons per year. For emissions to air, this study made use of emissions of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxides in the country where the data is obtained from the World Bank from the year 1970 to 2018. For the dissipative use of products, this covers fertilizers and pesticides, which was gathered from the database of the World Bank and Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, or FAO, respectively. Data for the waste disposal was obtained from the Department of Statistics Malaysia and Environmental Quality Report. Meanwhile, the emissions of water pertains to the biological oxygen demand, or the BOD. We only consider the BOD because of the limitations of the available data. This data was obtained from the Environmental Quality Report, the te Technical Paper of Huang in 2015, the Technical Paper of Afro Afroz in 2014, and the study of Chua and Garces in 1992. Socioeconomic data such as the population, the GDP, and the total land area was derived from the data in World Bank. The DMC of Malaysia steadily increased over the years, mainly due to the nation development policy. The aim of this plan is to sustain the growth momentum and to manage it successfully. The largest contributor to domestic extraction of Malaysia is biomass, which includes timber, oil palm waste, coconut truck fibers, and rice husks. In 2012, Malaysia was considered as the world's largest exporter of palm oil and its second largest producer. Moreover, a steady growth in the construction sector contributes to the increased production of non-metallic minerals. These inclu included increased construction of road, rails, ports, and airport projects from the expansion programs from the National Development Policy. But even with the increase in DMC, there is an evident decline in material intensity, or the DMC over GDP, from 1970 to 2017, as seen in the figure. This shows that over time, the increase of GDP is greater than DMC, meaning that there is lesser demand for materials to achieve the same GDP. In other words, the resource efficiency of Malaysia has improved over the years due to several factors such as development of technology and less material-intensive industries. Malaysia also set the third national agriculture, agricultural policy which includes increasing productivity by using fully mechanized and automated product systems and processes. From the definition of United Nations, material footprint pertains to the total amount of raw materials used to cater to the final consumption demands. The figure shows the increasing trend of the material footprint per capita of Malaysia. The Sixth Malaysia Plan, which is the first phase of the implementation of the Second Outline Perspective Plan, which embodies the nation development policy, began in 1991. This explains why there is a spike of material footprint in the figure. It then shows a dip during the 1998 Asian financial crisis, where there was a drop in domestic demand and investment, which led to lower consumption. To counter this, the government promoted liberal trade and investment regime that led to an increase in the following years. Here we have a graph comparing the GDP and DMI. As mentioned, DMI pertains to the materials that have economic value and are directly used in production and consumption of the country. It can be observed from the figure that GDP has surpassed DMI, which means that it has increased economic gain while minimizing the use of materials. This suggests the coupling. This finding can also be related to the discussion of resource efficiency above, wherein the domestic material consumption is being utilized efficiently. In terms of environmental pressures of economic development, it can be observed that Malaysia is able to attain development without creating as much damage to the environment. Policies such as National Policy on Climate Change was implemented, which aims to mainstream climate change by managing resources wisely and to strengthen institutional and implementation capacity. Specifically, they have a National Green Technology Policy that ensures sustainable real gross domestic product and increase energy consumption 
while reducing carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere. Furthermore, they implemented the Low Carbon Mobility Blueprint and Action Plan, which, could, um, which would encourage the people to use public transport due to clean energy vehicles and improvement of vehicle technologies. This next figure is similar to the previous figure because emissions to air has the largest contribution to the DPO. This is attributed to the country's large consumption of fossil fuels, large number of piggeries, and palm oil factories. So in terms of DPO and GDP, its decoupling has been achieved as seen in the figure. Malaysia has set the third national agricultural policy, which provided new approaches and policies that would enhance food security and increase productivity. Some of these approaches include less labor input by using fully mechanized and automated produce system and processes. This allows an increase in productivity while reducing the cost of production. And because of the use of machinery and equipment, the processes are optimized, which leads to low contribution of dissipative use of products to the DPO. To address the emissions to water, which is part of the DPO of a country, the Environment Quality Act of 1974 was created. This sets a standard of effluent discharge to be followed by various sections. According to the Veterinary Services Department of Malaysia, there are approximately 717 standing pig population performed, which generates a large amount of waste. And besides this, these livestock, misoperation for palm oil production also impacts the amount of BOD generated in Malaysia. The extremely dense population in urban centers also contribute to the pollution in rivers, basically converting them to open sewers. This Environment Quality Act of 1974 is the primary legislative instrument that governs the improvement and maintenance of water policy in Malaysia. These regulations include Environmental Quality Regulations 2009 and Environmental Quality Industrial Affluent Regulations of 2009. In conclusion, Malaysia has shifted its economy from agriculture and mining to a manufacturing economy in the 1970s. This was done to accelerate the pace of industrialization and to achieve the goal of eliminating poverty as stipulated in the new economic policy. It was identified that Malaysia is more efficient in its resource use where materials are maximized for economic gain. An increase in domestic resources used for consumption is also evident. And although the country is more efficient in its resources, the amount of waste it generates, it, it, it generates to the environment is also continuously increasing. Better policies should be implemented for greener consumption of resources and production of goods. In terms of DPO, focus should be given on the emissions of air as current efforts have not seen a decrease in these outputs. And here are the list of references used in the study. Thank you again for listening. My name is Mika Mancilia, and I wish that you have a great day.